Hey guys, welcome back. It's the new year, 2016. We are sitting on the Big Game Hunters podcast exclusive to the hashtag Magdronair Digital Network. It's Friday, we're in the studio today on the spotlight, sitting here with Jim Keenan. He's a sales and marketing guru, CEO and founder of The Sales Guy. He's an author of Not Taught. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the studio, Jim. Boom. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. Keenan, if I could, uh, if I could summarize you in one word, what would that be? Who like uh, sales guru? What, what is it? Chief antagonizer, baby. What? Antagonize. <laughs> Why are you the chief antagonizer? I love that. I love that title. Love it. Because look, how many things can you make and make them good without making change, stirring, adding, taking away any type of food requires anything, everything and anything that's any good requires that it's, it's, it's beaten, masked, turned, spurned, split, cut, worked. That's what I do. And do you do that in a, in, in a sales capacity as well? Like, are you, are you the antagonizer of a, a sales company when you go and consult with, you go and antagonize their sales process and you show them what's wrong and help them change? Is that, is, am I reading the in between the lines there? Or? Yeah, what's your story, Jim? Right. You're nailing it. I, I work with companies who are either just starting out, so funded startups, giant corporations like Verizon, mid-market companies who are who are either shrinking in sales and can't figure out why, or they're uh, trying to scale. So a lot of organizations that get to a certain point and then figure out, okay, we got to get to the next level, and they bring me in to fix it, and that's what I do. So how did you get started in this business? Obviously, it takes your, it takes time to get out there, get your name out there, really grow a brand for yourself. How did you get started in sales, and how did your company to be yeah, where it is today? Walk us through Keenan's yeah. live up to date. So, so I, I was a salesperson first. I was really good at it. And within, I started selling chamber memberships when I was 27 after partying the world and doing all kinds of cool stuff. I said, it was time to settle down. Within 18 months or two years, no, I'm sorry. Within three and a half years, I became vice president of sales for a, a billion dollar company. And I ran a $300 million market for what was called uh, managed mode. It was back in the days of dial up internet. So from there, my career was going like this. But what happened was my resume couldn't compete with people at my level because they had been doing it for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so anytime I found myself needing a new job, I sent a resume that showed, you know, managed 300 million in revenue, 150 people nationwide, et cetera, et cetera. And it showed four years of history. <laughs> so I, ne I couldn't get any, I couldn't compete on paper. Yeah. So I said, screw this. I'm not gonna compete on paper anymore. I'm gonna start a blog and I'm gonna talk about all the things I know about sales and what it takes to run a sales organization, how to handle the problems, how to capitalize on strategy. And I did that and two years into it, it was it was listed as a top sales world magazine, top 50 sales and marketing blog. People were calling me saying, I got these problems, can you help me? And I was like, okay, I can keep working for the man or I can start a consulting practice. It was an easy decision. Wow, wow. And, then, and, and that's the sales guy now. That's where you're at now. Is that what you're referring yep. to? Or okay? Yeah, there you go, right there, baby, a sales guy. Love it, love it. So how so how <laughs> so how long how long has your business been around now? So when did you first start this business? Five years ago. Five years, Five years ago, it's been it's been a great decision. Obviously, you look like an, it's typical because we see a lot of salespeople get into the entrepreneurial path because sales is obviously so important to business growth. Um, how many companies do you typically work with at one period of time? How big is your portfolio? Do you go in for one, or do you have yeah. a few on the go at the same time, or? No, I work with about four or five at a time. The average length is, I, I always say it's three months, but no one ever wants to let me go. That's the hard part. So I would say the average <laughs> tenure is about six or eight months. So we come in in the first two to three months, we're actually doing a lot of fixing, a lot of changing, a lot of planning, a lot of development, a lot of execution. And then they keep me, uh, keep me on for continual support, continual execution, and uh, to have sort of a, a, a brain trust to go along with them. So. And what are you finding some, some companies are facing? What are the true challenges? Obviously, you, you speak to a lot of different hiring managers, a lot of sales managers, a lot of companies, small to medium size. What, is the, what are some of the key things that these hiring managers are facing when it comes to their sales team? A true lack of understanding of how sales really works. It's yeah. amazing. We're still this idea of pitch decks and they're still trying to get people to pitch the story. And I asked the gentleman just the other day, brand new client yesterday, I said, you're sitting next to your ideal client on a plane. He asked you, you know, oh, hey, we're looking for something like that. Why should we go with you? And he's the first word out of his mouth is, oh, if you go with us, you don't have to integrate with third party applications. This was the vice senior vice president of sales. And I looked at him, I said, that's what you're going to tell your primary customer or potential customer that you don't integrate with third party apps, that is your value proposition, that's your sales message? Are you freaking kidding me? So now I know why you're having a hard time. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in, so it's a fundamental lack 
of understanding of how to sell. Almost every sales organization I've ever been involved with is uh, struggling with. So what you said there is that the fundamental uh, issue that companies are having is that in a sales capacity is that people are not understanding how to sell, right? That are understanding what their value proposition is is it to get their customer to buy or get their get their customer even remotely interested in the ne- in the first five to ten seconds. Is that what what that what you're referring to there? Yeah, yeah. What most people do when they sell, and, and I, I don't know why they do this, because a lot of good books. Jill Conrath has done a great job with it. Um, the Challenger Sales done a great job with it. I mean, there's a lot of really good books that tell people what to do, but for that particular reason, they're not listening, or it goes in one ear and poof, flying out the other. Yeah. Selling is about in. Influencing change. That's what sales is all about. So in order to influence change, you have to understand where they are currently Mm -hmm. and what the future state is. And therefore, you have to begin to understand what the drivers, the motivations, and the literal problems are. And when I start talking to salespeople, they have no freaking clue what problem they're solving. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing why businesses are, are existed, right? The bigger the problem, the bigger the business, right? Bigger the problem. Thank you very much. Bigger the business. Amen. Uh, what about from a, what about from a personal like a, a personality trait? I'm not sure if you break down into this into individual salespeople, but what would you say would be the number one uh, personality trait behind someone that's a that's great at sales? And what's the number one personality behind someone that isn't isn't is not so great at sales? Doesn't matter. Personality trait doesn't matter. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> right. Sorry. So personality trait doesn't matter. What matters is the greatest skill set, in my opinion, is assessment and analysis. That's the greatest one. If you have someone who's really good at asking powerful, provoking discovery questions Mm -hmm. that force the client to think and evaluate their existing environment, that's a good salesperson. Because what they can do with that is they hear the salesperson, I'm sorry, is they hear the buyer describe the problems in their environment, what they're struggling with, and why it matters and the impact to that environment, then you can go back and say, oh, you said that because it takes you 24 hours to develop this report for your board and for the government, it's caught, it, you miss out on opportunities that then put you a day behind your competition, which makes it difficult for you to, a good salesman says, oh, if I could cut all that out and I could make all that go away, you'd be one step ahead of your competition and therefore you'd probably win more deals and generate more money. Yes, that's exactly right. Let's talk. So my next question, Jim, is do you think as a, 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 as a sales manager, should they be spending more time with their top performers or more time with their underperformers? Uh, more time. Woo. It's an interesting one. You know, we, of, we often yeah. hear that, right? Yeah. Like, is uh, you've got you've got fifteen or twenty guys sitting in your sales environment. <laughs> You're the sales manager. You've got you know five or six of those people um, continually performing, producing, hitting their targets, coming in high energy, high enthusiasm. Should you be spending more with those with, with those performers, or you should be looking at the people that are underperforming? I, I believe once I have a coaching cadence that I teach my customers have, and I believe that you should spend the same amount of time with everybody. Mm-hmm. And what you do is you should build a coaching cadence that's, that allows you to be coaching them at the same time. Every, I like every six weeks, but sometimes we do every eight or 10. But every six weeks, for an hour, they know it's coming and it's pure coaching. It's not performance evaluation, it's pure coaching. Mm -hmm. And you look at what they're doing well and not. If you wanna sort of push the envelope a little and you wanna ask the question, um, you know, should I be investing a little more time or investing more? I don't invest in higher performers or lower performers, I invest in the people who have the greatest upside. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? That's what I want to look for. Yes, that's what I look because I have some high performers that they're tapped out, right? Yeah. So to, 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 I just want to make sure they stay there. To, to, to try to invest more time to get more atoms of waste. And same thing with underperformers. But if I have an underperformer that's got massive potential or a high performance even more potential, that's where I want to spend the little additional time getting people to get more out of so them. Carving their skills and, and making them better. So my next question is when is it time to get rid of someone? When is it that just that time, you know, you feel you put your time in, your energy in, they're just not quite learning. When is it time just to get them out of the sales team and, uh, you know, That's shake their nice. hand, pat their back and, and wish them all the best? Nobody should be underperforming. Okay, so this is sort of a complex question, but I'm going to simplify it. Nobody's, so I believe in the, in the behaviors results matrix. You guys ever seen that? Yeah. Okay, so behaviors on one side, result, uh, results on the other. Yeah. So nobody, I wrote on this in Forbes, so if you look it up, you can find it. Nobody who's in the lower quadrant down here that mm-hmm. doesn't demonstrate the behaviors and isn't making the results, nobody should sit in that box more than 90 days. End of discussion. If you're not demonstrating the right behaviors and you're not delivering them the right results, get the fuck out. 
get them out, yeah. gone, right? Yeah. If, if they are demonstrating the right behaviors, the cultural behaviors, they're trying, they're trying to be coaching, they represent your company well, but they're just not getting the results, then, then give them you know, 120 days, give them time, invest in them, because they're winners. You just want to move them over to the results box, so, so don't be so quick with them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if they're demonstrating the behaviors and getting the results, shower them with gold and move on. The really hard ones are the people who are delivering the results but not demonstrating the behaviors. Think Terrell Owens in American football. If you don't know who that is, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. of course but, yeah. Right? So think about guys like that, that they, they're killing it. And as long as they're delivering the results, teams put up with it. I, I say give them more than 90 days, but don't give them forever. You can't have people dragging the rest of the team down just because they're making the results. Because the minute they don't, you're going to fire them anyways. So get them up and out. Give them about the same amount of time, 120 days to get the behaviors in line. Yeah. But then if they can't, results are not, get them the fuck out. It, they're, they're hurting your company, and it's not worth it in the end. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting analogy with the Terrell Owens because, you know, or even yeah. like, for example, in, in, in current football, it could be someone like a Deshaun Jackson, right? If they're performing great, if not, and they've got that kind of ego or personality, then they're just going to bring the team down and they're not going to perform. So it's yeah. a great analogy. I love the football. But is someone like that always going to perform and always be the showstopper, right? That's the thing. Always if they the are, keep them, bring not, it. you're out. Yeah, but uh, interesting. what about like, and this is a bit of a different uh, flavor of a question because I know it varies per, per industry or, or what you're selling, but... What about sales reach out methods? Like in, in your experience, is, is, is it still cold calling? Is it emailing? Is it lunch? Is it social selling, so to speak? I know that's a, a big thing. Now, what, what would you say is, is some of the, the strongest tools or, or where do you see the future of, of the initial reach out going? Yes, 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 and yes. Maybe not the lunch. No one has that much time. It takes too much time. But yes, social, yes, phone, yes, email, yes, LinkedIn, Yes, yes, yes. Look, there's no secret sauce here. Stop looking for a secret sauce. Whatever you need to do to connect with your customer, you do it. Yeah. If you need to make a phone call, I believe in a cadence. I'm a big fan of cadence. I have a cadence that says, okay, I'm going to reach out on LinkedIn. Now I'm going to reach out on phone. Now I'm going to reach out on email. Now I'm going to repeat the cycle. Right? Yeah. I may yeah. find them on Twitter. I might tweet something they have. I see they did a post on LinkedIn. I'll share that. I'll comment on that. But I will, every touch point you can use, use it, integrate them, because you don't know what your customer likes best. He may like phone best, so then use the phone. He may like email, he, who, who gives a shit? Yeah. Use them all, all bound. Not yeah. inbound, outbound, all. All of them, right? Continually hit them, and up, hit them hard and hit them frequent, when right? When you say the cycle, hit them again. What would you say is the, the what would you say is a, a sweet spot in terms of follow-up cycle? Is it, is it a, every day, is it every week, is it, what, what would you say, do you have any Every month, is it dependent on, on the life cycle of the think? sale? Yeah. I like every five to six days. Nice. Okay. Because nobody wants to get punched in the face every 15 minutes. No, right. No. But at the same token, more than a week and they've forgotten you. So I like five to six days. Some people like three or four. Look, this is a subjective thing. I like five to six days because just as they're about to forget you, boom, you show up again. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And you never run the risk of them saying, God, you just reached out to me. Give me a chance to call. Right. Every three days, it's like, Jesus, dude, I just got your message. Give me a minute here. Right. <laughs> five or six days, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no one says I was about to call a week later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like every five to six days. But what's more important, guys, than the than the cadence and then what medium you use? Listen up, people. It's your freaking message. That's what's more important. Yeah. Because if you use all those mediums and you're using your cadence is good, but it's hey, I'd like to take five minutes of your time, or hey, I'd like to tell you about my product. It doesn't freaking matter. No one yeah. gives a shit. It's yeah. your message that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Message tonality is everything. How impulsive it is. You know, if you know know about the business, I know we do a lot of this in our business too as well. Messaging and and tonality and communication through through what method of what we're trying to hit them at is is critical. What I found interesting, what you said earlier in the in the show here, was about when you were in um, uh, when you were four years into a VP of sales uh, capacity and you couldn't compete in the market because people were looking for 10 to 15 years. What we're noticing is that's even tenfold now where companies are looking for someone who's young and up and coming, but they want 10 years of experience. So what do you think would be a solution to that in today's world? Like, yes, people can go start a consulting practice if they have a few years of experience, but what, would you, what, what kind of advice would you have to anyone looking to get into sales where they're looking for five years of experience, et cetera? How would you conquer that now? Say you were well, 25 see, years difference. old. When I was that age, the only way to get a job was your resume or someone would reference you, right? There was no, there was internet, but not really. There was no social media. There was no LinkedIn. There was no, I'm old guys. I'm 48 in April. So none of this existed, right? So my resume was my main uh, marketing piece, okay? Now that's not the case. So any company that only hires on experience, I'm telling you now, you're clowns. Experience doesn't matter. Expertise matters. Yeah. 
That's what matters, expertise. So what I tell people now is focus, it's in my book, ta -da, ta -da, not taught. Focus on expertise. Ask yourself, how much more do you know about selling? How much more do you know about the sales process? How much more do you know about building sales process? How much more do you know about leading people? How much more do you know about evaluating sales people? How much more do you know about hiring process? How much more do you know about the entire world of building, developing, and managing sales organizations than the next guy? Yeah. And then preach it. Post it on LinkedIn, post it on Twitter, start a blog. I don't start a YouTube channel. I don't really give a shit how you do it. Yeah. But make sure that when you run into that employer who says, well, you know, you've only got about six or seven years, I'm looking for someone for 15, you say, well, you know, wait a minute. And if you're a good salesperson, you'll already talk to them about the position. You'll say, look, you're really looking for someone who can grow your sales organization from 10 people to 200 people. You're looking for someone who understands the challenges. Well, I have been talking about that. I know how to do that. Take a look at this blog post. Take a look at this um, YouTube channel. Take a look at to my podcast and tell me if these are the types of things you want someone to get done because I know how to do it. Yeah, and if you it. still want some of the experience, then I can't help you. Because you know how many, one of my favorite phrases in my book, there are people with 20 years experience and five years expertise. Yeah. And there are people with five years expertise and 20 years experience. I'm out of the way around, sorry. Five years experience and 20 years expertise. Get that, my point? Yeah, that's absolutely. What, and that's absolutely. something I struggle with. I'm Take like, the I, expertise, not the experience. I think about all the time when I'm like, Ooh. when I'm recruiting for someone, they need uh, 15 years of experience. I'm like, well, wait a second. Like the length of time doesn't validate how good you are at something at all. Because in five years, I could have accomplished what someone did in 15. That's and right. there's more upside potential in that because I've got 25 years still left on the career path versus yep. 10. Interesting. Okay, well Interesting. Now, to the blog, so we're gonna get into the book. You started blogging, and that's ultimately what led you to your consulting practice now. Blogging, did you create a site? Did you just start talking about some of your experiences and then it kind of just got traction? Or what if someone was gonna start a sales blog today? What would be some of your advice? Just start and see what happens or? Just start, just start and see what happens. Um, yeah. Darren Rose wrote a post the other day. He was right, the best way to learn about blogging is to just start. If I yeah. were to start a blog, <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I talk about it in my book. If I were to start a blog today, what I would probably do is I would start it on LinkedIn using LinkedIn Pulse. Yeah. Excuse me, using LinkedIn Pulse. I would get some traction and I would probably use, this is just made up, anecdotal, but I would probably wait till I could average between 800 and 1,000 views on LinkedIn, right? And then, and so that's gonna take a while to build up, but on average, and once I got to that, yeah. I would then say, hey guys, I am now blogging over here on this. Yes. I would take all those blog posts, I would dump them into my WordPress, and then I would begin to build that reach on my own site where I owned it. Yeah. But I would feed it by, because I, when I started, it was just WordPress. So I remember I got like, you know, 10 views a day, three views a day, and I just had to just slog through that for two years yep. to really start getting, so yeah. I would use, yeah, I would use LinkedIn as a cool. feeder. Yeah, it's almost like taking that one resource and then getting it offsite onto your own site where you can then monetize that traffic. Yeah, yeah, perfect. What, are, yeah. what about books? Awesome. What about books? Like I, I, you, you, you reference a few authors and a few books in the I past. I see like, snap selling in behind him right there. I see the, snap selling, that's an uh, awesome book. What are some book. books that you recommend to some people right now, either in sales or just all around business, entrepreneurship that, yeah. that have helped you and that you ultimately re recommend to people? What does that List person them all. need? Boom. Mike Weinberg's Sales Management Simplified and New Sales Simplified. Okay. Must read. Mike, okay. must read, number one. No question about it, <laughs> right? This one is for complex selling people. If you sell a big deals to complex things with multiple buyers, read this or your bonus. It's amazing research that tells you how, how difficult selling is and how you need to leverage the different buyers to make the sale, which is very new and different. Who's that by? Uh, CEB, the people who did the challenger sale. Okay, yeah, okay? perfect. So must read that for sure. Jill Conrad's Snap Selling, the oh, first yeah. book every salesperson should read today. Unequivocally, beyond a shadow of a doubt, first one they read, pick it up, read it, read it three times. Love it. And don't read anything else until you're done with this one. Okay. <laughs> Mark Ro Robert's, this is a great one for sales managers. If you're a sales manager, sales VP, read this. It'll help you figure out how to build a good sales team and make it work. Love it. I love McCoy cool. Mark. This is a motivation one, Edgy Conversations with Dan Walshmit. This is an inspiring book that will get you motivated. This cat runs ultra marathons, 100 miles without stopping. Wow. And he's funny, savage. he's driven, he's savage. Perseverance. He's savage. Yes, so read this, it's awesome, and it starts out with a powerful story about how he almost killed himself with a gun in his mouth. Okay, powerful wow. Story. This is an oldie. This is a must for anybody that wants to actually be somebody big. 
not just be a salesperson, but you want to do big things, execution, it changed everything for me when I was about 28. It got me stopped thinking like this and all these great ideas and got me thinking about how am I actually going to get shit done? Little stuff and big stuff. This is a must read, even though it's 20 years old or something like 15 years old, you got to read it. Cool. And then the last one, gentlemen, not, not taught. taught. Not yes. Taught. Not taught. Yeah. Well, okay. Now Tell us about the book. Tell, Tell us about, about the book. What when is it? did you write it? What's going on? So the simplicity of this book and why I wrote it is I, I woke up one day and I realized, well, okay, I got to give credit. The, Adam Grant wrote a great book called Give to Get. I mean, so Give and Take, okay? Great book about how those who give are more successful than those who don't. In spite of our traditional thinking, takers always seem to win. Givers do, right? And so here's an example of how it works. A friend of mine asked me to speak to the University of Denver, right? Free. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. No problem. It'd be my pleasure to help you out to one of his uh, graduate classes. I said, what do you want me to talk about? He said, I'd like you to tell them what they need to know when they graduate. All right, that's easy. So I sat down, I started writing the stuff down, and then it dawned on me. What they need to know now is so different than when I, when I graduated in 89, 90, right? It was so different. And so when I, I presented this to the kids, they loved it. And as I was presenting it, I was doing more and more thinking. I'm like, wait, this something here. So I asked the question, like Simon Sinek, why? Why is it different? And then it hit me, we are transitioning, we we'll have transitioned from the industrial age to the information age. And this transition of ages has changed the opportunities and the approaches and methodologies required to be successful, right? So I was like, oh my God. And I said, but nobody's teaching anybody this. Yeah. We're still teaching them to build resumes. We're still telling them to do the old school shit, not the new school shit. And I was like, if no one's doing it, I'll do it. And so I wrote the book to tell everybody what they should be focused on now and stop listening to their parents. Cool. Cool. What about? Wow. So, okay. And how can people find the book? Where can people go buy it? Amazon.com, uh, not taught Jim Keenan, or you can go to not taught.com. Fantastic. And a, not taught, not taught.com. What it takes to be successful in the 21st century that nobody's teaching you. Love wow. it. Wow. And uh, where, where else can people find you, Jim? A salesguy.com okay. is the best place. If you Google Jim Keenan, shoof, I'm like the whole first page. You can't miss me. S E O. S E O. Boom. All right. Well, hey, listen. We appreciate your time. It's it, this is what this is honestly one of my favorite interviews. High energy. Love, love it. it. A salesguy.com. I'll be checking out the book. I hope our viewers check it out. Not taught. Jim Keenan, a sales guy. Check him out. Check him out. We'll see, see you it. next week. Thanks for joining us in the studio. It's the Big Game Hunters. Hashtag Magnon Air. We'll see you next week. Boom. Boom. Oh.